All right, everybody. Well, today we're going to do another Maya 2020 tutorial. Before we jump in, I really want to ask you guys to check out BenQ.com. Without these guys, I wouldn't be able to do any of these videos and they're free for you guys. So please show them the courtesy of checking that out, right? Okay, so today's video is going to be about UVing, about texturing and about the old school approach using Photoshop. This is not about Photoshop, it's about uh, letting you guys understand how the process actually works because a lot of you guys are struggling with it, right? Well, that said, let's jump in. Here we go. This video has been made possible by BenQ. If you're a digital artist in need of a professional grade monitor, then check out BenQ.com. Okay, what are you all? Before we get started, let me warn you. This is a video for beginners and for those who are not beginners but are having trouble understanding the UV process, right? I get this question all the time. I know a lot of people are kind of ashamed to say that they don't understand uh, UVing. Well, that's fine. Just watch the video and don't tell anybody you did, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go back in history a little bit. And uh, nowadays everybody is texturing in programs like, you know, for example, Substance Painter, basically PBR uh, based texturing. But back in the day, you would do that in Photoshop. And a lot of people still do that in Photoshop because if you, for example, wanna add a logo or something like that, and you want to have a lot of control over position and scale or whatnot, it's easy to do in Photoshop. So for that reason, right? So again, simple, basic video. We're gonna take a simple object and I'm going to explain how UVs are structured and you can see that uh, so much better when you're working in Photoshop, right? So uh, let's uh, stop talking here, let's get started. All right, so I got a cube. Now, uh, by default, a cube is UV'd in Maya. So if you go up to UV and I go to the UV editor and I close this window, there you go. There's the cube, there's the UV. Now you're probably saying, okay, cool, I can use that. Well, you can, but I don't want you to because I want you to understand how this works, right? So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on object mode, make sure it's selected in object mode, and I'm gonna go up to, uh, let's see, camera based projection which will give us something that is utterly useless, right? That's the whole point. Now, then we're gonna go in here, right click the edge, we're gonna direct click all of it, yeah? We're gonna go over here, we're gonna right click, we're gonna go to cut and sew and cut. So we've now cut up this cube alongside all the edges. So we now have six faces, right? And just to prove that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click over here and let's go to modify and unfold whole bunch of stuff going on there yeah now next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in here make sure all of this is selected and we're going to right click and go to modify once again and we're going to look for layout and when we do that you see that they're now all positioned randomly they're all in the zero to one space so zero to one and zero to one yeah which is good but we need to stitch these together and there is a um, kind of a sequence here that's important because which face is connected to which face and in what manner. Now, the reason why that's important is when you start to add your texture, let's say you have a wood texture, you want it to have a grain that's going from here straight down here and that's connected. So you want this face to be connected to that one. Okay. Now, how do we do that? Well, we're going to go over here. We're going to take the first face. Yeah. And we're gonna make sure we're in the uh, edge. And as you can see, as I hover over here, it turns red. Now, when I select this one right here, you see that the corresponding one on the other face to the left also turns red, right? So that one belongs to that one, that one belongs to that one, and so forth. So I'm gonna go to that one. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna to go to cut and sew, and I'm gonna to go to move and sew. And when I do that, these two are now connected. So let's go over here. Click on that one, hit the G to repeat last command. There you go. G to repeat last command. There you go. That one's going there and that one's going there. All right, looks pretty similar to what we had before, right? Okay, so how do I get this thing in this zero to one space again? So we're gonna right click. We're gonna go and make sure we got the whole UV shell selected. We're gonna right click again. We're gonna go to modify and we're gonna go to unfold first. And then we're gonna go to modify and we're gonna go to layout which will put it in that space. Okay, I want it straight, so I'm gonna select it. 
I'm going to hit E to rotate as I would do in any other uh, situation in Maya like that. I'll hit W to move it over and there you go. Okay, so now you know what's what. Now let's see what the top face is here. Okay, so I'm going to go right click the face and you can see that the top of our cube is that face right there. Then the next one is the opposite one, right? And I'm looking for the one in the middle there. So let me just go around and see which one it is. And there you go, it's the bottom one, okay? Now, what I want for uh, our texturing setup is that in this bottom face, I want to have a number, and we're gonna add that in uh, Photoshop, right? Okay, so now that we have this, how do we get this exported? Now, there's a little camera symbol up here. So we're gonna click on that camera, and what it's gonna do is it's not gonna export our cube, it's gonna export our UV, so we can create a texture map that we can then apply to our cube. Hopefully that makes sense, right? So I'm gonna click on the camera here and it's saying, okay, you can now export that as a 2D file. It wants to take this path right here. I think that's a bit too complicated. So we'll go to the desktop and just save it there. And you need to have the out UV in the name. So I'll just call it out UV, yeah. And we'll save that on the desktop. And actually, let's redo that because it's IFF. I want to save it as a JPEG. There you go. 2K map size. Uh, U and V is both the one. We'll leave all of that alone. So let's do apply and close. Yeah. And there you go. So now if I open up Photoshop and I look for a file called out UV on my desktop, it should be there, right? So let's see if that's the case. Okay guys, well, we're in Photoshop and I went up to file and open, went to my desktop and there was the file called out UV. Now, right now we have a white line on a black background. I prefer to have that the other way around. So I'm gonna hit control I to invert and now we have black on white. Now, this is a layer in Photoshop and I don't know if you guys know about Photoshop and how layering works. If you want me to do a Photoshop tutorial, just let me know. But anyway, we have one layer going on right here. Now we don't want to be painting on this layer because we'll have these black lines in our texture, right? So this is just a reference. So I'm gonna go in here, hit the little plus key down here to make a new layer, and that's what we're gonna work on. Now we established that this square right here is the bottom of our cube, and we wanted to put some kind of number in there, right? So we're gonna go up here and we're gonna take a, a brush and we'll take a color, something like this, black, and the brush is huge as you can see. So we're gonna go in here and make that way, way, way smaller. So we got a brush right here. Let's go in here and create the number two. There you go. Now, like I said, this is a very basic setup, but it's intended to let you understand what's going on, right? Okay, so now that we have this, let's say i want something else in the other areas i want uh, i don't know let's do um, a different color we'll go up to i think that's pink or whatever take a brush again and we'll do something like that and then we'll take a totally different color and we'll do this right here and then we'll take a green color and we'll do that here We'll take uh, something like this, we'll do a circle, and we'll do something like this, and we'll do, I don't know, something like that. It doesn't really matter, right? Okay, now that we have all this, we don't need the background anymore. This is our UV layout. So this is basically our texture, yeah? And you can decide that you want to have a color other than these lines, right? So what I'll do is I'll take this layer and I'll delete it. I'll make a new layer. And I'll just hit uh, Control Delete to make that entire background in black. Now, you're not seeing the colors anymore because black is covering the other one. So you can left mouse click and drag and pull it down. And there you go. So that would be our texture, okay? Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go up to File. We're gonna go to Save As, and we're gonna save this on our desktop as a JPEG, yeah? And we'll call this texture and save and save. There you go. Let's go back into Maya. Okay, so remember the plan that we had to have the number two on the bottom of our cube and have the rest of the stuff on the rest of our cube? 
let's see if we can make that happen, right? I'm gonna minimize this. I'm gonna right click, go to object mode, and then I'm gonna right click and go to assign new material. All right, let's take a Lambert. It doesn't really matter what we do. Okay, so we've got a Lambert, and you can go in here and change colors or whatnot, but we don't wanna do that. What we wanna do is we wanna plug in the texture that we just made in Photoshop, right? So next to color, we got this little cube here. We're gonna click on that. And it's gonna allow us to select a file. So when we do that, we get this folder. We're gonna click on the folder, go to our desktop, look for a file called texture that we made, which is this guy right here. And we're gonna open that up, right? And I want to see it on my actual cube. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna select it, and we're gonna hit six on our keyboard. Now, as we do that, you can see that these are all the markings that we added, right? And if you look at the bottom of our cube, there's our number two. So hopefully that gives you a bit better understanding of how this UVing thing works. Now, I know you're probably gonna say, well, we don't use Photoshop for texturing, we use Substance Painter and so forth. This is to get you to understand how things are tied together and how you can control your um, UV process and your texturing process, right? So if you need to add something to an existing texture, let's say you textured in Substance Painter, you want to add a logo or a text or something onto it, you know how things are oriented, how they're set up, you know, skill-wise and so forth, right? So yeah, hopefully it was an enjoyable video for you guys. If it was, um, please let me know in the comments, hit that like button if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you don't wanna miss out on future videos, right? Take us next time, bye.